right, guys. What's going on? Welcome in. In this one, I'm joined by none other than the Buffalo Jet fan. What's up, bro? How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. You know, we got some news to get into that might be a little concerning, but as Robert Sala's coach says, you know, positive vibes only. There's a lot more uh, to be excited about this offseason and this training camp than there is to be worried about. So let's get into it, man. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude, of course. And by the way, for uh, everybody watching all of um, Buffalo Jet fans, links are down below in the description box. So I highly recommend checking it out, subscribing, all that stuff if you haven't already. But dude, I mean, you just touched on it, the unfortunate news. And crazy enough, we're actually filming this right after the news came out. This video might not go up for a day, um, but Makai Becton got hurt. We don't know the severity of it. It seems right now that everything, you know, knock on wood here, it seems like everything is going to be okay. According to Sala, it seems like he's optimistic about the whole thing. Um, but where do you stand on that? I mean, obviously, as a Jet fan, you're like pretty disappointed. But what do you think the next move is from here? Well, it's that it's a gut punch. You know, I think that after what happened last year, you know, the injuries, that's the one thing we've been hoping crossing our fingers. I just didn't want to see a tweet like that in August. Now, thankfully, the cart didn't come out. He was able to limp off under his own power, but limping heavily, favoring that surgically repaired right knee. Um, at this point with Makai Becton, you know, to me, two things are true. Number one, I think that Makai Becton is incredibly talented. I think he's a hard worker. I don't blame him for this injury. Yeah, I think the reports that he was weighing 400 pounds are kind of BS, to be honest. But at the same time, you know, looking realistically, he hasn't fully participated, you know, in any sort of football thing for an extended period of time for going on 11 months. So at this point, I don't know if the Jets can realistically count on Makai Becton to be available for the majority of a 17 game season and protecting Zach Wilson, uh, which it, it hurts to say that. And it's not definite. He could bounce back and surprise us, but I think at this point we have to look at whatever he can give us as added value, and it can't be uh, relied upon. So the next move is obviously don't let Dwayne Brown leave New Jersey if he hasn't already. He would definitely come in and you know solidify the this tackle position. Hopefully Makai's back, and you know then Dwayne Brown maybe is just a backup. But the thing is, even if it's uh, something minor like a, a knee sprain and Makai has to miss two weeks, well then. How long is it going to be? Till Because he was just starting to really round into game shape from not having played in forever. So if he misses another two weeks and that's kind of a setback, we got the Baltimore Ravens in 30 days. So even if he comes back within the preseason, is he going to be ready um, to go week one? So he, maybe we signed Dwayne Brown and maybe he has to start the first couple games and then Makai jumps back in. Um, but he would just make this tackle situation feel a lot better. We got to remember also Max Mitchell limped off last week. Uh, McDermott, we just found out, is going to be out a couple weeks. George Fant is still limited. Our best tackle right now who is fully healthy is Chuma Adoga. And we face Miles Garrett in 40 days. So the panic meter is starting to tick up for me. Dwayne Brown would make me feel a lot better. Yeah, dude. So you mentioned the the regular season, you know, Baltimore and Cleveland, all these teams. Um, I'm kind of concerned about joint practices too because it's not like the Falcons are going to be like, oh, the Jets are down a couple tackles. We'll go easy on them. You know, we also got joint practices against the Giants. People are trying to make teams. I mean, these guys, like, they're not going to hold back. They're not going to hold their punches or anything like that. So I think it's, to me, imperative. I mean, of course, as Jet fans, like, we're all hoping nothing but the best. We're all hoping Hayes might be out for a day or, you know, we'll, we'll hold him out for a practice and he'll be back soon, um, you know, compared to, you know, some week, you know, some multiple week uh, type of injury or anything like that, obviously. Um, but I, regardless, I still want Joe Douglas to go out and, and bring in Dwayne Brown, go out yep. and see what's up with Eric Fisher or Daryl Williams or Nate Solder. Like these guys, in my opinion, don't have to be top 20 tackles in football. Like they just have to be better than what the Jets currently have uh, with their backups. And I think that's really the big question here. Of course, the Jets don't have like a ton of cap space. It's not like the start of free agency anymore but they still have enough money to at least bring one guy in. I feel like it would just make everybody, all the Jets fans, the coaches, like everybody, you know, included, just they, they have that, uh, that, that security blanket. Just, hey, if something were to happen again, if Makai doesn't look like the same player, we have this guy, a veteran tackle who's seen a lot of football that we can count on and rely on. Might not be the best, but he's better than what the Jets currently have. So I think it's, I, I think it's huge, man. I, I really, really do. I, I don't want it to go uh, unnoticed. Yeah. And I, we, there was reports that JD and coach Sala were having a lengthy 
uh, you know, usually don't talk a lot during practice, but during a break, they did have a lengthy conversation where it was kind of some rough body language. And you got to think the conversation there was, we got to make that offer to Dwayne Brown a little bit sweeter. Yeah, definitely. And it kind of makes you think too, um, not to keep harping on the offensive line and in in this, you know, topic here. Um, but it kind of makes you think what's happening from Dwayne Brown's side. Does his asking price go up a little bit? You know, do, does another team look at that news and say, hey, you know what? We're also interest, uh, interested in Brown. Let's make a harder or like a faster push to go get him. Maybe bump, bump, you know, one of his current offers up. It, it, it's a big, um, it, it's kind of like Pandora's box at this point. But at the end of the day, I feel like Joe Douglas needs to get something done. We got to get at least, I mean, Andre Dillard is another option. Tevin Jenkins, maybe we'll see. Uh, so it's interesting, but outside of the injury outside of like the negativity and everything like that surrounding like the future of the tackle position, what's been your like standout or, or who really has been your standout player? Like so far through training camp, like Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, Zach Wilson has, some, has uh, stacked some pretty good days. Joe Flacco is apparently lighting it up. Who's been your number one standout? Well, I think the most important thing, the thing we love to see the most is Zach Wilson. Um, he's really had a strong string of three or four uh, days in a row out there. Obviously, the green and white scrimmage, um, he was 12 of 19, but there was like five balls that could have been caught. So really only one bad ball with the interception there. And then today he was nine for 11, and one of those passes was a throwaway. So you're talking consecutive days where it's been like really three, like just incompletions that weren't dropped. You love to see it. And I specifically love to see the, specific type of throws he's getting better at you know for me that the highlights when he's fading away uh, and and throwing it 60 yards like he did um, at the combine we love to see that it's cool on twitter uh, but those aren't where you make your bread and butter in the nfl where you what he's got to get better at and what he has been getting better at is those short to intermediate throws over the middle you know third and eight can you hit tyler conklin in a tight window that's what he did in the green and white scrimmage and that's what he did today you know big tight window throws to conklin uzama and Corey davis on the slant today um, he's quick, quick, decisive. Um, I think that Zach Wilson really could not have had a better off season so far, starting with the transformed body, the wide receiver camp, uh, tight end university. And now uh, we're seeing the fruits of that so far uh, in training camp. And hopefully that carries over to the games that matter. And I, I think it will. And then another guy, if I could just pick one other guy who I think is going to and I'll go with the rookies because that's that's what we're excited about. Right. And I think Sauce Gardner probably has the best career and i'm really excited to see i know you love garrett wilson i know he's your favorite pick and i'm really excited to see like the acrobatic plays he can make at the wide receiver position but i think the guy who makes the biggest impact right away is Brees hall yeah he's probably going to touch the ball more than anybody not named zach wilson and it's just impossible not to notice that he's different and he can do everything he can catch he's big he's got uh that blazing four three nine speed in the open field i can't wait to see him uh take the field yeah, dude, that's awesome. I love those uh, love those takes and points. What are you expecting from the Jets in preseason, though? Like, obviously, it's kind of a touchy subject with the injuries, but that aside, um, are you hoping for something that we saw, like, last year as far as, like, starters getting playing time? Uh, how much load would you put on the rookies, the veterans, stuff like that? Yeah, I, I definitely lean more towards resting guys as a, you know, there's that, the argument is like, okay, do you want to, rest guys and keep them healthy or do you guys need to play so that they're ready to go i think that you can fully prepare this team in your practices and your joint practices i think the preseason is a little bit of a joke to be honest um i mean i'm gonna watch every game because i'm a psycho jets fan but it, i don't think it matters a ton now if we want zach wilson to go out there for two series and throw the ball that's fine because quarterbacks are like super protected uh in the nfl um, and if the young guys, like if Jermaine Johnson needs to get some reps, if Quincy Williams and, you know, Jason Pinnock and guys like that need to hit somebody, uh, that's fine. But to me, guys like, you know, George Fant and Quinny Williams and Corey Davis and CJ Mosley, those higher paid veterans, honestly, I don't want to see them take the field at all during the preseason if it were up to me. Yeah, dude, it's, it's interesting because Saul actually came out uh, in today's presser and said that uh, the starters are going to be getting, I believe, a quarter. Um, yep. And that's to me it's like you know philadelphia eagles a good team well coach everything like that but to me that's like a lot like one quarter for the starters like i know on paper it might only be like two or three drives but i i think if i'm the jets man and i'm looking at the past couple of seasons like hey this guy's been hurt this guy's been out for the year we lost him and you know this game and stuff like that like you missed you've we've missed so many 
or star players on this team, the better players on this team have missed so much time, so much time. And I, I think, honestly, I, I know preseason, it, it's important to get those reps against, you know, uh, you know, uh, competition and everything like that. And I get guys are fighting for roster spots. Um, but at the same time, like, eh, I, I want to see Zach Wilson out there, maybe one series max. Yeah. Like that's it for the first, you know, first, I want to say like two games and the third pre or, uh, you know, maybe one, one drive in the first game, two to three in uh, the second game against Atlanta. And then, you know, in the third game, just keep them out, keep them all out. Yeah. Right. Quinnen and fan, like all the guys that you mentioned. I'm right there with you. And, and the, the Rams, the Los Angeles Rams didn't play a single starter last year and they won the Super Bowl. And I know that's, they're an older team, but you know, the, like you just said, the, the veteran guys, I just, to me, the risk is not worth it. And players will tell you because they're in the preseason, they're almost playing not to get hurt and they're playing at this 80% speed and you're actually more likely to get hurt that way. And it's just, yeah. I, I don't just, I just don't see it being worth it. That's always like a joke, like back in high school, like with, you know, like kids, it was, it was always just like, dude, you have to practice like hundred percent because if you practice and you play, like you don't want to get hurt. The chances of you getting hurt, ironically enough, just go way up. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, dude, I appreciate the time. I, uh, I know you got some stuff to, uh, you got some stuff going on later, uh, but dude, thanks so much for hopping on, man. I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. We'll talk ball soon. Sounds good. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets. Thank you.